What's up guys? Welcome back to the couch again. And so I'm sure most of you at some point or another have seen cars that have wheels that look like they're about to fold under it and either fly away or to the future or something. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. But why? I know some of my car enthusiasts and racer viewers already know this, but for those of you that don't, is there a reason for this? And what is it? So that's today's topic. And I'm gonna try my best to explain why so much camber. Okay, so tires and how they contact the road are extremely important in vehicle design. The tires are your sole contact point between the road and the vehicle, and thus everything the car has to do has to go through the tires. Several different angles are measured in a wheel alignment in an attempt to make the contact between the tires and the road as good as possible in every circumstance. But the one I'm focusing on today is camber, which is the leaning in or out of the top of the tire relative to the ground. Obviously, a camber of zero or straight up and down sounds like it would be best for traction as it would put even pressure on the entire tread patch. But it's important at this point to understand that you have to think about this in two ways. The tire's position as it sits when the car is stationary or not being acted upon by any particular force is what's called a static state. So we call that static camber. But what we're really interested in is what the camber is when the vehicle is under a load or is having forces act upon it when the suspension is compressed or when the car's cornering and weight is shifting around. And that would be what's called dynamic camber. A dynamic camber isn't the same as static camber because there are things like suspension flex and tire deflection and the compression of the suspension and the way the geometry changes that and the way other alignment angles may change the camber as the wheels turn or as the suspension compresses or droops. Now there are a couple reasons other than performance why you might want to add negative camber to a car. Especially in the tuner community, you may see cars that have camber because they're running wheels or tires that are a lot wider than what will fit in the fender. And they're actually just cambered in to make room so that they don't hit the fender. So for clearance issues. Also, in the stanced crowd, you're gonna see that they a lot of times just like the look of a lot of camber. So they use that in the pursuit of a certain aesthetic appearance, despite the fact that for the most part, it's detrimental to the suspension's ability to do its job and definitely not good for performance. But as far as performance goes, which is your main important reasons why you're gonna be worried about camber, there are basically a couple reasons why you have your camber at a specific number and not at zero. One, when the outside tire is loaded during a turn, weight shifts to that side, causing the wheel and tire to deflect or flex in that direction. And that deforms the tire, putting more pressure on the outside edge of the tire. So having some negative camber to start with means that essentially, you are rolling onto the tire instead of off of it. So that helps to flatten out that surface when you're actually under load and, and cornering. The second reason is in many cars, the SAI or steering angle of inclination is such that when the wheel is turned very far, it will actually push the dynamic camber number positive. So in a lot of those cases, they'll, people will run more negative camber than they may necessarily need otherwise, just so that the SAI doesn't take the camber away when steering. Um, this is a lot more common in McPherson strut suspensions on front wheel drive cars because the caster and the steering angle of inclination can't be adjusted separately. And a lot of times 
you want to run a lot of caster in these cars, but you end up with an SAI that's unfavorable because of it or vice versa. And on a final note, camber really isn't a more is better thing. Once you have as much camber as you need to put the entire contact patch on the ground when you're loaded as much as you can be, adding any more than that doesn't increase your grip. As a matter of fact, beyond that, you start to come back the other direction where you're actually taking contact patch away and thus losing traction. The other thing to remember about this is that having a lot of camber, though it is good for grip in a turn, will actually cost you grip in a straight line, which is why you don't see drag cars with a lot of negative camber or really any most of the time. So it's once again, it's not a case of just as much as you can get. It's a balance between how much camber you need for the grip you need in the turns versus how much grip you need in a straight line. So as with anything else, this isn't just something that you can willy nilly throw at whatever number um, to really set up a car well, if you're gonna be changing these numbers, requires trial and error, track days, measurements, lots of changing until you find the setting that works the best for you. In most street cars though, you can pretty much leave the camber spec where it is from the factory and it'll be good. Most cars factory come with a little negative camber for the reasons that I talked about and that's usually plenty for any street car. So you really don't need to change anything. Um, and other than that, just remember that adding camber when it's not necessary will do more harm than good. It'll just make the inside edges of the tires wear. It'll cost you traction in a straight line and sometimes some stability as well. So that's about all I really have to say about this at the moment. Um, so I hope this was somewhat educational. Um, I decided to talk about this subject this week because I saw someone asking about it in someone else's thread and I thought that the answer they got wasn't very accurate. So I wanted to go over a couple of things that I think people don't talk about enough. Um, other than that, uh, not much to say about the channel at the moment, except for that I have another video that I'm going to be filming today for later in the week. So that's going on. Other than that, the new channel art shirts are still available. That link's going to be down in the comments as well as in the end screen. So watch for that and uh, subscribe if you're new here. Hit the bell icon if you're not. Give me a like on the video or dislike it if you don't like it. We take either one here, do what you need to do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.